Lucasfilm really has done it again with the casting of Charmin Obeyed Chinoy to be the director because, let's be completely honest, you can take a look at her IMDb page and does a whole host of feminist documentaries really jump off the page at you and scream Star Wars? Yeah, I don't think so, but she has the right temperament, at least for current incarnation of Disney Lucasfilm, but I think this is definitely going to end up having that same type of reaction at the box office at least when this eventually does come out in 2026 that the Marvels had back in 2023 but only time will tell on that one because there is a there's a lot of information to still go over on this one and trust me there's a lot of people that will be going over it and while everybody has seen the initial clip and well I played it in my video you know we're just going to be going over some stuff because there are some other clips that have been around for a little while that really give a good insight into who this is individual who really wants to lead Star Wars into the future, this woman to finally shape the story in a galaxy far, far away. I wonder how Kathleen Kennedy, Leslie Headland, Ryan Johnson, they really feel about, you know, being thrown to the wayside. But let's refresh everybody's memory first and foremost, right? You know, I'm very thrilled about the project because I think um, what we are about to create is something very special. Yeah, special. And we're in 2024 now. And I think uh, it's about time that we had a woman uh, come forward uh, to shape the story in a galaxy far, far away. Yes, of course, and that's the first thing that she says, remember, because went to the source document, the CNN interview directly on the website, and that's what she leads with. So, is that another type of a situation, like you had with Rachel Zegler when she was out there at that D23 event, where the first thing that comes to mind is that a Snow White is an antiquated, outdated story, and we're going to be telling a new, modern version of it, because Disney, over here at Disney, we have the ideas on how to properly represent and how to properly craft what it means to be a woman in current year and none of it's all that popular so you continue to try and craft that stuff but here's another clip that has been making the rounds and if even matt walsh is talking about it and it's like okay cool so nice that um i guess somebody over there the daily wire is finally start to pick up or starting to pick up what the red pole has been putting down for a long time but hey better late than never right here's the feminist director of the next star wars film saying that her goal is to make men feel uncomfortable this movie is destined to be disney's biggest flop yet well it's still got a couple of years on that one and the world is going to be a much different place but these type of divisive politics oh no they're still they're going to be evergreen evergreen cancer that is but here's the clip that yeah i'm sure that you guys have probably seen before but for uh, for full context sake we'll just go ahead and play this because this isn't new okay you're gonna notice okay because there's charmine right over there not as many gray hairs in her head because this is something that happened eight years ago eight years ago it's not like her casting as the director for this ray project has been unknown and it's like the moment that that film came out and all of those pictures that you've seen even back in the you know cnn clip that was right there okay they had her at star wars celebration i think that was last year where they brought daisy ridley out of the closet in order to just you know just come up here yeah we're gonna be you know doing another ray film we're gonna be bringing back the character that practically crippled the franchise of being a cinematic draw anymore and just exclusively went to being a streaming property that's that's gonna be a winning formula that's gonna be our big triumphant return to theaters seven years after the final film that wasn't supposed to be the final film, but because the sequel trilogy was handled so poorly, they'll go ahead and try to spin a different tale that, oh no, no, it, it was always it was always designed. Uh, the Obi-Wan movie? No, 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 that was never supposed to be a movie. It was better, the, the ideas and the concepts were better flushed out in a streaming show. Sure thing on that one. But all of these people have been in place for a long time. Charmin there, of course, you know, that was one of the first things outside of we're making a Ray movie and we've got a feminist to direct it. OK, so this is the first time that I seen this clip, but let's refresh some memories, shall we? So we got John the Cuck Stewart. God, that guy's an atrocious piece of work. So, of course, he would be hosting a a. A panel of very victimized, very diverse women that are up there on stage at the Women in the World conference. 
I couldn't think of somebody or somewhere where I would at least like to be, but you know, I'm glad at least somebody recorded this so that we could go ahead and refresh our memories as to where Star Wars will be heading if it's being crafted by these individuals. What is the balance of activating a force for change, but also trying to permeate oh my God, get that on with it. patriarchy, that power structure? Ugh. And is that a part of the calculation of your art as well? And See, this is so quintessentially eight years ago where you're still unironically using the term patriarchy. At least these people, they do not say these people, you know what I mean by these people. They at least know that all of that nomenclature is very much out of the cultural zeitgeist and that it just continues to get clowned into the ground. So yeah, they've kind of moved on from that. This is where all of these ideas are from. They were never popular at the time for as many people that have come out and said, oh my god, these, these concepts, these ideas, they're straight out of 2016, 2018. Like, no, they, they've always been trash. It's kind of like rewriting the 60s as being this halcyon days of hippie-dumb. No, no, no. It was only a small period of time in a very sm a niche subsection of individuals. For the most part, it was kind of a continuation of the 1950s with the biggest performing artists of this decade. It's being your crooners, but no, no, no. The stupid Beatles and Woodstock was out there for a month. It was kind of like disco, but... The hippies had a better marketing department, but we'll continue on. Just get on with it, John. And what's been the reaction to that? Oh, absolutely. Um, I like to make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. <laughs> and really drive that home. Not you. Just, just not, you not, know, you. Not, not you. Point not taken. You. Point taken. <laughs> oh but, um, you know, it is important to be able to look into the eyes of a man and say, I am here and recognize that. Yeah, we can tell various, uh, several obvious markers, but continue. And recognize that I am working to bring something that makes you uncomfortable and it should make you uncomfortable because you need to change your attitude. And it right, it's everybody else that needs to change this victim. Now. Oh, it's going to be so great in Star Wars. I'm so glad that galaxies far, far away, a long, long time ago, they were still dealing with modern day issues. Great. It's only when you're uncomfortable, when you're shifty, when you have to have difficult conversations that you will perhaps look at yourself in the mirror and not like oh, the reflection right. and then say, maybe there is something wrong with the way I think, or maybe there is something wrong with the way I am addressing this issue what is see here's the problem okay because she at least you know pointed over there to john it's like it's not the individual it's just simply all men that are the problem what the hell what is going on here okay you can have somebody that is just so openly against a class of individuals as long as it's the right class of individuals mm interesting it's always interesting how this stuff plays out but okay this is just some brainlet documentarian okay maybe okay maybe she really knocked it out the park with those two episodes of ms marvel that she also directed for disney a different branch and maybe people would have you know picked up to her certain stylings had anybody actually watched ms marvel but it was a show theoretically right up her alley given the fact that she is from that part of the world no she's pakistani canadian and I think, what, Kamala Khan is supposed to be Indian or something like that. Whatever, man. It's like, you know, Hollywood casting Asians. They don't care if you're Vietnamese, Korean, Japanese, whatever. If they need a Chinese person, the eyes, it's close enough. We'll just go with that one. But she's actually, she's actually got quite a track record. Not when it really comes to directing fiction or big franchises or anything like that. Uh, she's also in bed deep with the World Economic Forum, which is absolutely wild, but totally on point for current day Hollywood. Award-winning award filmmaker Charmaine Obeid Chinoy is about to become the first ever artist to co-chair the WEF on Monday's statement. Remember, this is from a while back, so yeah. When she was out there making the rounds saying, I'm what make men feel uncomfortable she was also getting handpicked by the klaus schwab types 
Interesting. Annual three-day meeting starting January 17th in Davos, Switzerland. It says Chinoy regards it as a great honor to represent both the artistic community and her country. It's interesting. She considers that to be a great honor, but then she wants to take what is at one point in time the largest cinematic franchise, and she wants to go ahead and you know, just kind of mold it to her own whims and desires. Very interesting, but okay, she was also making some other speeches at the time as well in regards to the WEF, and well, I heard this clip. I heard this clip, and um, I think this tells a lot more than the other ones that have made the rounds before. Not for the fact that, oh my god, she's tied in with the World Economic Forum, a uh, global world domination, oh my god, oh, she, she just wants a uh, new world order. No, 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 okay, I'm not gonna get all info warsy on you. I just want to simply get down to the bottom of this and really show that she, her hatred of men, is a product of her environment. And that's what I take away from this clip right here, but let's run it. To be honest, is that I'm a woman. I mean, you know, many women that come from our part of the world think that it's a disadvantage. I've always thought that being a woman is my greatest asset. I mean, I really can get away with doing a lot of things in Pakistan, um, getting into places and getting out because I'm a woman. But you don't play that card, do you? Of course I play the woman oh, you card. Do. <laughs> oh my god. Yep. Her most important characteristic, not anything that she's done in the sense of work or showing any sort of, you know, consistent track record of accomplishments. No, no, no. I'm a woman. That's the most important point. Oh, great. Great. Hell yes! I wanted to hear I that. I mean, you're a South Asian woman. You've got of to play course. the woman card. There's a long line of men standing. Stand That's... to the front of the line. That... How can I stand if there's a hundred people standing in line? No. When you can play the woman card, you, will. you play the woman card. The damsel oh, wow. in distress. I mean, don't I look like a damsel in distress? Is that I'm a woman? Oh, Jesus. I mean, you know, Ended many... up, you know, running that back. The fact that you say that sometimes that you use that card is okay, immensely interesting for me to hear because very few women admit to that. Well, you know, the thing is that um, you've got to play all sides, you know. If I need to stand up and, and face a man and look, in, uh, look at him in the eyes and... and she really likes to use that phrase, even from, you know, back in the day as well. Hmm. And scare him off a little bit. I do scare Pakistani men off a little bit. Um, <laughs> that, th I do. And I enjoy that power. You like being intimidated? I, I, I enjoy that power that I can scare him. And he kind of takes it back. Yo, that's kind of crazy, but play the rest of it here before I add my commentary. Step and then looks away. Um, and then if I need to be a woman and, and be the damsel in distress, then I will be the woman and be the damsel in distress. Because we live in, in countries where you can do both. And I like that. I like the fact that somebody else is going to stand in line and, and, and let me cut in and say, please. I like that. Why not? You know what? Okay. So, so much to take away from that. So much to take away from that. But, okay. So, cool. What, what did you immediately hear from her? Okay. She likes to play both sides of the aisle. She likes to, you know, be the damsel in distress while also simultaneously just being the driving force in the room. Okay. Cool. Okay. It's very strange. Like the interviewer pointed out that you're just going to be forthright and say that. Hmm. And interesting that you would just openly admit that. But it's not going to be anything that would be terribly unique it's just you know she's forthright about it but how she likes to wield power um normally isn't that kind of what they accuse all of those evil men of doing why is it always projection with these types but what else the overarching thing that i've seen right there that i haven't seen other people point out is that the type of men that she's around okay it's like the john stewart types uh, I like to bully Pakistani men. Nothing against Pakistani men. She's used to being around weak guys because she also made allusions to that at the end where, okay, I will go ahead and I will play the damsel in distress when there's, you know, certain people that are around. And that's, that's kind of what I see. That's actually a lot of what I see when it comes to Hollywood and that their just overt hatred of men is because just like it's not too dissimilar from chicks on OnlyFans. They see the worst aspects of men, the capitulating, weak, sad, spineless version of men. I just want to go ahead and, oh, we need to prop up women. We need to give women another shot. It's time for men to take a step back. They'll just continue to denigrate themselves and thinking that, okay, cool. By giving the approval of a self-admitted weaker class of individuals, that's going to make the women feel better? It's like, no, no. Then they just look at you for the pieces of shit that you claim yourself to be. 
That does nobody any benefits. That's like when you get the self-deprecating, oh, she's my better half, I'm lucky to have her type guys that are out there. Do you actually think that, that plays well for your woman? No, 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 that just makes her look like she's a bad choice of talent. These chicks in Hollywood, okay, because you hear the stories, okay, you know about the casting couches, you know about the Harvey Weinsteins that are out there. These are scummy individuals and how they climb to the top and all of their backroom dealings and how many names that have been on, you know, a certain man's uh, client list, a certain island out there. Not high quality individuals. These are people who would sell their mother for a nickel. And that's because because they've worked in these places they've grown up in these places they've surrounded themselves with these types of individuals for so long you start to think that that's everybody that's out there and that's just clearly not the case but when it's all said and done that's the type of perspective that is going to be given to uh let's be honest let's be honest okay if you break down the demographics of your average star wars fan you might get some women who are just like yeah i've seen the star wars films thought they were pretty neat but the hardcore nerd guys okay the guys who understand the lore the guys that have the hundreds of eu books the guys that play all of those old lucas arts games okay who can give you a complete and total rundown of every branching joys in the old KOTOR games. Who still have a subscription to Knights of the Old Republic. Who can give you the, uh, the family tree of Kyle Katarn. That type of dedicated fan? It's like 95% male? Oh yes, this film. This film, when it does get released, because they put in way too much promotion. And given the fact that they really reintroduced it to the popular zeitgeist on CNN, that wasn't a mistake at all. No, no, no. They know what their new audience is, okay? They're making this overtly political. They are definitely infusing it with the message, and they picked the perfect letter carrier in this situation Charmaine Obaid Chinoy there's going to be so much stuff coming out about her next few years and what's going on behind the scenes at Lucasfilm and oh boy it's going to be fun to catalog so with all that said thank you all very much for the gift of your time I've been Don Consuelo I want you to follow your gut and get after it take care everyone